Welcome back to Introduction to Computer Science at SSFS. If you remember in our last video, we got our graphical user interface version of our tip calculator to work correctly. And when we ran it, we saw it look like this. We could put in a meal cost. We could change the tip amount. We could put the number of diners. And we got some number of amount per person. And we realized that by looking at this, it's really not that great. If you notice that it's kind of broken up a little oddly, we have, looks like almost one column where a bunch of stuff is in here. We have another column, it's kind of this width where things are in here. And then a third, a fourth, and a fifth column. Without any modification, what TK Enter usually does by default is to make each cell as wide as the widest cell in the column. So you see this total amount per person is the widest label. So everything in that column defaults to that width. And that's why the second column starts when this one ends. Same thing, this entry field is the widest part in this next column. So everything is that width. So we need to actually tell TK Enter we don't want it to, to make it like this. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And I've created a new file that's a new and improved version of our graphical user interface. I'm going to go ahead and run this just so you'll see that right now it's the same thing. So it looks the same. The first thing I'm going to fix is these radio buttons just don't line up right. And so we're going to introduce the concept of frames. And so far we've been working with one frame, the root frame. And all the widgets went inside this one frame. We can actually put subframes into our GUI and then put widgets in that. And we can actually make it line up a little bit nicer. So we're going to start by doing that for our radio buttons. So I'm going to scroll down to the radio entry label. I'm going to create a radio button frame. And that's going to equal TK enter dot frame this time. And all I need is to know what parent that frame is going to go into. It's going to go into root. Then I'm going to grid it. And I'm going to make it be under my label. So it's going to be row equals five, column equals one. So I'm going to put in the first column. And then for all the radio buttons, instead of making their parent root, I'm going to make the parent radio button frame. So I'm putting all the radio buttons in their own frame. And let's see what that looks like. And you can see now all the radio buttons are evenly spaced in their own frame. Now my frame with the radio buttons is the longest cell in column one. So the next column begins when it ends. Because I want the number of diners to spread over the whole frame, I actually want it to go in this column and in this column. So what I'm going to tell that frame is I'm going to say I want you to actually span two columns. So I'm going to go back up here to my frame and I'm going to add another parameter to the grid method. I'm going to say column span equals two. So span across two columns. Now when I run it, it goes across two columns and it looks a little bit nicer. Now the first column is defined by total amount per person and you can see that it's really broken into two columns now. Uh, it would be nice if number of diners was centered over this. So I'm going to do the same thing to number of diners. I'm going to make it span two columns. So I'll go to the diners label and I'll do its column span equals two. Let's look at that. And now it's a little bit centered. So already it's looking a lot better than it did a few minutes ago. Okay, so let's go back up and let's look at this title, Simple Tip Calculator. We want to make it stand out a little bit. So one of the things you can do with labels is you can change the font. And so I'm going to go ahead to my Simple Tip Calculator label here, and I'm going to add a font parameter. And within the font parameter, I can actually change several things. I can change the font family. Again, it has to be a legal font that's installed on the machine. I can change the size and I can change 
the style. So I'm going to make it Verdana 24 point and bold. And let's look at that. And now Simple Tip Calculator really stands out. But again, let's make it span those two columns. So I'm going to add the column span to the grid method. It's going to span two columns. Now that's starting to look a little bit nicer. One other thing we can change is you see that the meal cost is here, but the entry field is over here. There's a lot of space between those. It would be nice if they were kind of together. So what I'm going to do to this entry field is I'm going to tell it justify over on this side. If you look in this first column, you know that the meal cost label is centered in the column. I actually don't want it to be centered. I want it justified on the right-hand side. So what I can do is I can say, well, I want you to stick to the right-hand side. So I can use the command sticky, and I use a um, like directional notation, north, south, east, or west. And since I want them against the right-hand side, I'm going to say I want sticky to the east. Oops. To the east. And then what I'll do for the entry field is I'll make the sticky on that to the west. So it's going to go to the left. So now when I run it, you can see that meal cost and the entry label are now closer together. I'm going to do the same thing for the tip amount and the scale. The tip amount, oops, let me close all these. So I'll make this sticky for the tip amount to the east. And I will make the sticky for this one west. And I forgot the equal sign up here. Let's look at this again. And now these are lined up, and it's starting to look pretty good. So a couple more things I can do is I can actually, let's move my button over. So I will move the button centered. And then notice that when I do the calculation, the number is justified over here. I want to make the number on this side as well. So let's go ahead and center the button and move this label over a little bit to the west. So I'll go to the button. All I have to do is make it span two columns, like I did with the other labels. And for this, I'll go sticky equals west. All right, let's run it one more time. If I calculate the tip, make it 20%, let's do it for people. Now the number is closer to my label, which looks a little bit better. So we've done a lot of things in a, in a few minutes here to make this look better. Is it perfect? No, there's a lot more things we can do. Uh, one other thing before we stop is, notice that when I first run it, by default, this meal cost label is blank, or the meal cost entry is blank, and there's nothing selected for the number of diners. So if I click Calculate Tip, notice I get all these errors down here. So what I'm going to do is this. Let's go ahead and fix that. It may not prevent every error, but it may help. So in the same way I can set, in my, my calculate function, I could set an amount. I'm going to set initial values for the cost. So I'm going to say the cost is $10. So at least something's there. The user can change that, but at least if they hit the button, they won't get an error. And the other thing I'll do is I will set the number of diners. I'll set it to two. Maybe someone's on a date. So let's go ahead and run that now. And notice there's a default meal cost and a default number of diners. So if I actually do hit the button, now it calculates for me and it gives me uh, a number without any errors down here as my program runs. So again, we've made some improvements. Is it great? 
I'll leave that up to you to decide. If we go back and look at our original one and put them side by side, I say that this one does look a little bit better. So that's all for now. Um, one of the things you can do if you want to make your interface looks better is you can investigate padding, which can put space in between those. Um, and I encourage you to do that in your own programs. So stop. So next time we'll take a look at a, an entirely different way to construct a program and we'll begin investigating object-oriented programming.